This month was both very productive and not very productive. I met my goal of implementing the basic skill and power cards by the 2nd of April, so I'd already completed my goal. I then duplicated and refactored my project and created three new cards that were more complex than the basic cards I made for testing. I wrote out a lot of brainstorming ideas and set up a GitHub page for my new project so I could share it with all of you. It was only Easter at this point, but I ended up paralyzed with indecision after this. I think I'm going to chalk this up to the stress of the current situation, but let's not delay a moment longer. The skill card was simple to implement. I copied the attack from last month and changed it so that the target was self, card type was skill, and the constructor set up values for block and base block instead of damage. The upgrade function similarly upgraded the block value. In the use function, instead of damage action, I used gain block action. With a block value of 5, this gives you a basic defend. Package and run to test, adding the card the same way as before. The power card was also simple with a lot of the same types of changes, using magic number instead of block or damage, except the use now has an apply power action. This is more complicated than the damage and block actions in that we need to just apply the power to apply. These powers include pretty much any buff or debuff in the game. Weakness, vulnerability, and strength all fall into this powers category. The default's common power actually demonstrates applying a custom power, but that's not what I want to focus on right now, so I did some digging through com.megacrit.cardcrawl.powers package and found the strength power, and imported that to the class. After adding the apply power action with the strength power, I packaged again, tested the card, and found that it worked smoothly. At this point, I had achieved my goal, but was left unsatisfied. In addition, the idea of making a more interesting card hardly felt interesting in a void. I started brainstorming cards and thought, what cards do I actually want in the game? I had been playing the Ironclad a lot, and really wanted cards to better support the self-damage archetype, so my brainstorming sessions started going down that route. This new project is something of a miniature expansion, so I'm going with the highly creative name of Spansion. I may have taken a marketing class in college, but that hardly means I'm good with branding. As I alluded to, I made a GitHub repository for this project. You can find it at github.com slash axandros slash sts dash spansion. The repo does include future card plans that I don't intend to talk about here today, but I'm hoping to keep the master branch in a packageable state at all times. Git is also a skill I've been meaning to learn for a while, so this project might help me on that quest. On to Spansion's design. I've got three cards in mind for the colorless collection. The old 1-2 will be an attack card that hits twice, inflicting vulnerable both times. If we set the damage to 4, then it should deal 10 damage. It's basically a slightly better bash, so it should cost 2. However, this design has a lot of flexibility, since it goes to 12 damage if the target is already vulnerable, and it gets 2 times the bonus from strength. Fancy Footwork will be a skill that adds defense if the enemy intends to attack and... Uh, do something else if they aren't going to attack. Let's try... Drawing a card. Sure. Finally, the power will grant one strength and one dexterity for every card you play each turn. But you lose that strength and dexterity each turn. I spent way too long coming up with the name... Aspect of the Crow, since the Forms cycle already existed, and the Watcher was using stances. I didn't want to use those names, so I went with Aspect, though that's probably treading over someone's feet anyway. Anyway, I made a new project, linked it to GitHub, and copied most of my test mod project to get everything set up. Step one was getting the project to package and run again. A lot of refactoring, forgetting where the phrase test mod was used, and finding a handful of the default references that I had missed my first time through, 
and I had gotten everything up and running. In particular, modthespire.json, my expansion resources directory, and the strings files were the ones I tended to forget. All right, let's get implementing. I started with the skill. It needs to target an enemy, then add block action or add card draw action, depending on the monster's intent. I couldn't figure out intents at first, so I made the card to grant both the block and the card draw to make sure I actually knew how to do these. This involved the block action and a draw card action. I was quickly able to access the abstract monster's intent, but figuring out how to get the intents for comparison took time. I took advantage of the autocomplete features and began delving into the packages for Mod the Spire and Base Mod in an attempt to find the basic intents. I eventually found them in com.megacrit.cardcrawl.monsters.abstractmonster.intent. This left me with another issue. There are multiple intents for attacking, and I want all of them to count. I could not find a function to check for attacks only, so I created a new class in the util package of my project to hold these sorts of miscellaneous reusable code scraps. I worked out the boolean statement to determine if an intent is an attack, verified that it worked through testing, then moved the statement to a function in the utilities class and referenced the static function in my cards use function. Okay, easy enough. Let's do the attack. The old 1-2 has syntax in the name that I don't believe is valid for a class name, so I'm calling the attacks class the old 1-2, and supplying the name in the text string for the card. So long as the IDs match up, the name and the class can be completely different. This one was extremely simple to implement. Inside a for loop, I apply a damage effect on the stack, then apply a power for the vulnerability. The trick here is to know what variables need to be applied where, and what values to assign to what built-in variables. The damage and base damage values obviously got the damage value to deal, and the magic and base magic numbers got the amount of vulnerable to apply. I debated if I should use the defense variables to assign the number of attacks in the for loop, but I decided against it. Ideally, you create a secondary magic number for additional magic numbers instead of reusing the existing variables for things outside of their intended purpose. See the defaults abstract default card and abstract dynamic card classes. I instead hard-coded the loop to two. Finally, the card Aspect of the Crow was simple to implement. The tricky part comes in creating a custom power. The card just needs to apply that power. We can use the default's custom common power as a base create a new class, preferably in a new package for custom powers, and copy in the common powers code. This power already does half of what we want. In the overridden onUseCard function, this power applies an amount of the dexterity power. Adding a strength version of this is easy. The amount value used to determine how many of the power to apply is actually the number of stacks of this power on the character. So, if we had three stacks of this power, playing a card would give us three dexterity. The temporary part of this power comes in the later function, on end turn. Here, the power gets the number of cards played this turn by incrementing a counter inside a for each loop. Then, if cards have been played, the icon flashes, and then removes the powers it granted in another for loop. Copying this reduction and replacing the copy's dexterity power with strength allows us to balance out the strength gain we added earlier. We'll need to create a new image for the powers icon, add in new strings JSON file for powers, and implement make power path in the main class for loading the image, package and test the new card and power. Something I found that I didn't like was that the strength and dexterity powers are decreased one at a time. If you have only one or two from the power, this isn't a concern, but a crazy turn with five or six cards played means that the animation for removing the powers takes several seconds. Let's see if we can fix that. 
Inside the power, instead of using the second for loop to apply multiple reduce power actions, I removed the loop and had it reduce the powers by the number of cards. At first I thought this worked, until I ended up with two stacks of the power in playtesting. I was getting two strength and dexterity every time I played a card, but I only lost half of those at the end of the turn. I needed to multiply the count by the amount, the stack size, in order to balance that out. Playtesting is extremely important. It not only helps to find these sorts of bugs, but also helps balancing your content. I'll probably talk a bit more about my balancing process in next month's video. Hopefully by then, I'll have an actual process. I'm going to be working on implementing the red and green cards I've thought up, and trying to come up with relics for the colors. Go ahead and give the video a like if you're finding this series helpful or entertaining. It's always a great pick-me-up to see that my videos are gaining more traction. I'll see you again in June.